Hi everyone. In this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be teaching us on why God wants you to prosper and why you should prosper in life and in destiny. Prepare to be blessed by this video production. Feel free to share the link, comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much and God bless you. Believers always run away from demands. Because to many believers, they believe all it takes is just a prophetic word. If I say, open your hands and stretch it towards me now. In a hurry. You will even wake your baby and stretch his own tiny hands too. So that the baby receives his portion and that is good. This stronghold in the mind that is stopping you from stepping into prophecy i don't know what ministry has struggled financially i don't know what family is struggling financially but in the name of jesus christ by this unction that has landed through this prophecy you come out of shame and reproach you come out of shame and reproach in the name of jesus welcome to start now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in god's presence the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 130, The entrance of thy word is that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's light. If you live a defeated life financially, you will still go to heaven. And then you will discover that God has spoken great things concerning you, his Zion. But you did not maximize your life spiritually. I'm told of a story, I think it's just some fiction to illustrate how that a gentleman one time was taking a voyage from one nation to another and when he got there they noticed that he was not coming for lunch and dinner within the ship he locked himself and he was just praying he had starved for days without food because unknown to him that the train ticket covered his meals and he did not know that and he would lock up himself starving with a lot of pain getting lean, getting sick. And one time, I think one of the, you know, attendants came to knock his door and he opened and he said, we notice your seat has been empty. And the person said, well, um, I'm not sure I have any seat here. Are you not a, a bona fide passenger here? Yes. Did you pay? Yes. There's a provision for you to enjoy your meals. And the person said, well, I don't know. Mine is just to arrive safely. Now, whether or not that person knew did not stop his seat from being vacant. My goodness. How many believers do not know that God is a God of portions? That God is kind enough. The Bible tells us, watch this. It says, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Just because you are not aware does not mean the provision is not there. Can God ask you to start a vision and not create the system of empowerment? What sort of a God is that? Can God empower you to start a family, grant you access to children and not empower you to be able to take care of them with dignity? That is not the God we serve. We must not allow our ignorance misrepresent God. Are we together? It says, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us honor and glory and power and riches and blessing. That's what he died to receive for us. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us. He received all this for us. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. This is what he received for us. Now, whether you walk in the experience of these things or not, is another subject. But it's important for you to know that you have stepped into a season where God wants to see you step into abundance so that you are able to serve the purposes of the, of the Lord. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. Now, I want to show you something very powerful. In this kingdom, please let me have your attention. In this kingdom, there is a difference between wealth, abundance, and kingdom wealth. There is a difference. A difference between wealth, abundance, and kingdom wealth. They are not the same. 
and I'm going to tell you what the difference is. For many people, when they approach the subject of abundance and the subject of wealth or the subject of well-being generally, they think that the way the world approaches this subject is the way the saints should approach the subject. That is an error already. The believer is governed by a set of beliefs. There is an understanding that if you do not have, you are not a true believer. Are we together? There is a difference between wealth, abundance, and kingdom wealth and abundance. That word kingdom makes all the difference. I have taught you here and it bears repeating that you must understand the purpose of the blessings of the Lord. In the kingdom, you are already at a risk if you try to journey on the path to wealth and abundance without knowing why. The first thing you receive as a believer is an orientation as to why God prepared an economic system for you. The difference between carnality and a mundane pursuit that ends you up in the flesh or that which empowers you to be an effective witness is disorientation. I have taught you that there are three essential reasons why God blesses the saints, why he opens us up to abundance, sufficiency, and wealth. Can I repeat it for your learning? Number one, to live a comfortable life. Write that down and never forget it. God is not against your living comfortably. Know this. God wants you and I to live a comfortable life whilst we serve him. It is the reason why sacrifice means a lot to him because you were not designed to live that way. God wants you to live a comfortable life. Number two, the second assignment behind your accessing the supplies of heaven in all its ramifications, whether finances or otherwise, the second reason is so that you can advance the cause of the kingdom. My God, please write that. Star it if you are writing and don't forget that. A bigger reason, a bigger motivation as to why you must manifest the blessings, why you must access finances, resources, and abundance in the kingdom is so that you can make resources available for this kingdom come project. I will repeat it again for your hearing that the name of the Lord Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Anybody who is incapacitated will not be able to do much for the kingdom in this end time. I tell you this from the integrity of scripture. If you are incapacitated financially, you will not be able to do much. Not for the kingdom, not for yourself, not for your family. Poverty and lack and want robs men of dignity. It reduces men to look like lower animals. Hallelujah advancement of the kingdom is the second reason why we are blessed in this kingdom the third and final reason why god grants us access to resources and why he's bringing us into this prophetic season of abundance is to be able to be a blessing to the world in a practical and a definite way write that down please god wants you to be a blessing to all and sundry according to genesis chapter 12 and verse 3 in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed God wants you to be a blessing to people beyond the walls of religion, beyond the walls of Christianity. That society is able to experience the impact of the love of Jesus through your life and that principally through your giving. Show me a believer who loves Jesus, who loves society and has the means, the economic means. I show you one who will be a blessing to all, not just to Christians, not just to believers. There are many of you who already have compassionate hearts, but your limitations as far as communicating love and benevolence is lack of resources. And Satan wants it so because he knows you will never be able to help anyone with an empty hand. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The motivation behind your desire for wealth and abundance 
must be purified by this revelation must be purified by this revelation there are many believers who like money they love it to a point of obsession they are carnally minded driven by money usually they like preachers talking about subjects like this not necessarily because they love god not necessarily because they love his program they just love the idea of being rich they love the idea of being of means they love the idea of being better than someone that is not the kingdom's approach to the subject of abundance god's goal is not for you to have more money than brother a or sister b and then flaunt it marketing the flesh no that's not god's goal god's goal is not just for you to celebrate that you have become you have arrived or as we call it in our vernacular here you are blown all that subject is complete nonsense from a kingdom standpoint there is a greater and nobler approach and this is what i'm teaching you i tell you that there are many believers who will never access the supplies of heaven the reason is not that they are not hard working the reason is not that they are not productive there is a corruption in their heart you have been weighed by god and you have been found to be better off without those resources god has seen that if these resources step into your hand you will be a danger to yourself you will be a danger to your family a danger to the body of christ it's like giving a small child a grenade and that child can detonate it plain and blow up himself blow up everyone there so god educates you and in order of priority before he shows you his ways he has to culture your understanding the reason why i grant you access to financial resources influence any kind of supply is number one for your comfort number two so that you will provide resources for kingdom advance number three so that you can extend and reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. Are we learning? Church is now quiet. You rejoice when you heard that it was a season of abundance. But now as the demands are being unveiled, believers always run away from demands. Because to many believers, they believe all it takes is just a prophetic word. If I say, open your hands and stretch it towards me now. In a hurry. You will even wake your baby and stretch his own tiny hands too. So that the baby receives his portion and that is good. This stronghold in the mind that is stopping you from stepping into prophecy. I don't know what ministry has struggled financially. I don't know what family is struggling financially, but in the name of Jesus Christ, by this unction that has landed through this prophecy, you come out of shame and reproach. You come out of shame and reproach in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Listen, let me honestly confess to you in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of honesty, reject poverty reject lack reject want are we together reject it it will rob you of living a life of dignity there are some of you now who are sick no machine can diagnose what is wrong with you because what is wrong with you is not from your body it is the pressure of rent the pressure of a court case you are not able to pay this whatever it is I've seen people depressed as a result of this economic thing. And do you know, it is a strategy. Every time I've taught you here, when Satan sees that your concentration towards spiritual things is heightening, increasing, what he does is he does something to your finances so that you, you leave your passion for God and you have to turn to face the matter of making ends meet one of the most destruct destructive strategies of satan is to make your finances deplete indefinitely you will lose concentration you will not be able to pray again not be able to fast again as a man of god god is telling you to teach on the holy spirit hold a crusade and you check your balance and your balance is nothing encouraging you will most likely disobey that instruction are we together we believe you are blessed by the message you just watched 
Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.